Okay, so uh, hopefully this is working. The uh, cable going into the audio is a bit ratty looking. So anyway, it is the 9th of June, 2020. Sorry, I've kind of been off air. I've not uploaded anything in a while. I've been doing stuff, trying to come up with stuff that will grab people's attention, which is super annoying. just that yeah so it's a bit super annoying but uh, yeah I think now is the time to kind of pander to the algorithm so likes and comments and uh, if you're watching a video or you're watching one of these videos and you get bored go and make a cup of tea leave it to run to the end you know I think we're moving into an important phase. I mean, it's one of the reasons I've suffered from creative paralysis a little bit. <sighs> wow. All the things are being very complicated. So, you know, you've got the COVID-19, you've got the protests against police brutality. You know, which should have happened sooner, but I guess it didn't. It needed to hit, you know the Instagram and Twitter generation hard in a way that they couldn't ignore. And it's not like uh, all this stuff hasn't been going on and it hasn't been reported and it wasn't illegal to start with. But hey, best time to plant a tree and all that. So yeah, so things look like they're moving. Uh, but I've got a few issues you know you know because anti-minority violence whether that's economic minorities racial minorities religious minorities all that sort of gubbins you know has to stop but it's systemic it's built into the fabric of government you know it's there to allow the people in power, and that's not necessarily the government, but the people that pay for the government and fund it privately, as in they give money to individual representatives and therefore get to decide which way that representative votes in any given Congress session or parliamentary session, those people are being paid. You know, and it's a slippery slope you know, there's probably, you know, there's a few MPs that won't take payment, that won't take bribes, because that's what they are, but uh, not many. You know, power, one of the reasons people seek it is they get to line their own pockets and become more powerful in their own right, rather than powerful on, on behalf of the people that elected them in a democracy. And how they get elected is usually by manipulating our base urges. We want money. We want to be treated special. You know, we want those people that we feel are taking advantage of us to be punished. But let me ask you this. What job is an unemployed single mother on welfare doing? That's right. She's raising a new generation of taxpayers. So she's employed. You know, and the state best treater as such. Because who knows? In one generation, everybody that's currently voting, thinking they're all right, may be undermined. Look at the way COVID has wreaked havoc across the economy for everybody apart from the super wealthy. They're all still rich. You know, they didn't lose their jobs. They didn't lose their houses, their incomes, their homes, you know, given that the way society has been vilifying people on welfare, their self-respect, you know. And then when those people are on welfare, they're going to be vilified just as much as, you know, the people they were vilifying not six months ago. So what does it matter, you know? 
a single billionaire represents 20,000 years of someone being in a good job. 20,000 years salary. And yes, they may have worked initially slightly harder. They may feel that they have to guide the reins of a business. But 20,000 years worth of pay? You know, and everybody seems to think, you know, once they get to a certain level of wealth, that they're on the way to that being that billionaire or making sure their children inherit that kind of money so they get a good start towards being a billionaire. And sooner or later, we've got to recognise that everybody that's wealthy, you know, if, they, if they're wealthy as a result of inherited wealth going back more than 200 years, and even inherited wealth now, in order to have that kind of wealth, you've got to oppress other human beings. You've got to pay them less than their labour is worth. You've got to basically shorten their lives, make them miserable, suicidal in some cases, slaves in some other cases where people are barely being paid at all and have to work 18 hour days in conditions we would not tolerate. And you generally only can get those conditions in, a, in an environment where people have no choice and they don't have the strength to oppose a system that would make them live like that. And it's not okay. You know, however you want to look at it, we're all cousins. We're all related. You know, that's just evolutionary speaking, or even religiously speaking, we're all related. You don't get to claim you're religious if you perpetrate that system. Because you clearly, if you're doing evil shit, can't believe in God. It's not possible. How, how could you believe in a being that is necessarily going to punish the shit out of you. You can't, you know, there's no way. You can't do something evil that you didn't need to do. I mean, there's a difference, you know. If you've killed another human being in defence of your own life or the defence of your loved ones directly, not in some ideological sense, then you were pushed into a position where you didn't have a choice. You know? you probably make that choice again. Got a bit lost. So yeah, you know, it's not possible, it's not viable, you know. So I believe in religion, but not organised religion. Like sometimes a crime is warranted, but organised crime never is. So yeah. You know, we, have, we are legally compelled to hand over around a third of our income if you tot it all up. And for that, we're supposed to be getting basic services. Oh, I think I know where I've gone wrong. But yeah. Hold on a minute. We seem to forget that we employ the government. It's not the other way around. They work for us. Well, they should do. But somewhere along the line, personal enrichment became a thing. Laws were eased. Major companies realised that they couldn't directly bribe people, but they could, you know, purchase people in, in the way that they put people on seats of boards and stuff and give them wonderful jobs. You know, that pay millions of dollars. You know, which is what happens to most high-ranking politicians when they retire or lose their seat and they don't really care most of them there's a few it's rather pointless to name names in your own countries just look at a few of them there are a few countries where it's a respectable profession but not many so look at them figure out who they work for so yes the Black Lives Matter protests do matter. They're important. They've got people mobilised, got people out of their homes, got people to show up in numbers that worry people in power, that start getting questions asked by people that care. So yeah, you know, it's important. You know, it makes it clear that this isn't gonna stand. 
So it's time for all the people out there saying things because they're funny and because it's edge lordy. You know, you guys need to grow up a little bit and step up as members of the human race. That we're in this fight and we're not in this fight for long because if we keep leaving the people in power in power, they're going to sell us down the river because they'll be dead soon and they'll enjoy all the trappings of power while they're alive and they don't much care about any ecological collapse you know that's going to happen in your children's lifetime they're going to burn your planet if you don't watch them you don't get rid of them you don't make it exactly clear what their job is so yes protests are important obviously all lives matter but you know in this case you know right up until you know they murdered a guy in front of a bunch of white people which they didn't think they'd do they just basically showed how callous and arrogant they are but that's been going on you know all over America especially you know basically since slavery so what you're seeing now is you know white people generously allowing black people and don't take that out of context to roam around free but they're going to be oppressed every step of the way and if they're going to do that to one group of people it's only a matter of time before they're doing it to everybody you know that's people they're killing out there it's important it's important for your children you know and your grandchildren you know you're paying for a security service that murders your people you know in a kind of genocidal way you know and they're not even doing it because they especially hate black people they're doing it because they can they're doing it because people with a lot of money want civilization to be divided so we can be easily divided come election time so we'll look at the color of a person's skin and think that it matters so that we'll look at other people and try and persuade ourselves that they're not our brothers and sisters you know i don't want to start singing kumbaya or shit but you know it's game time and if you're putting lots of effort into denigrating this and you think that you know they're not going to come after poor white trash they're not going to come after people from asia they're not going to come after everybody eventually you know they're not going to secure a whole group of minorities economic racial orientation you don't think they're going to come after us they're already coming after us you know there are rumors that some senators that have been voting against things like gay marriage and you know lgbt rights that turn out to be gay themselves you know possibly they're being leaned on people so their secret won't get out but they've dug themselves such a deep hole that they can they feel they can never come back from it you can always come back from it and be a decent human being and we need to recognize that we need to make it possible for people to come back from terrible shit they've done so that they're on our side you know this is a numbers game and we need to understand that and the thing is if we treat it like a numbers game and just use logic we're going to win you know for every one of them there's 99 of us it's probably even more than that it's probably millions of us to one of them you know the people that really pull the strings the people that got the kind of money and resources to lean on politicians to withdraw their funding if they don't play ball with people that are wealthy in a flagrant disregard for democracy so if you think you've got democracy now you're deluded you know, the Western world doesn't have democracy. It has a delusion of democracy, like money is an, an illusion. Money allows those people to do whatever they want and get away with it. Now I'm looking at you, Dominic Cummings. So yeah, so you either put aside all these stupid, tiny, minuscule differences and stand up and start f learning and thinking for yourself, or it's going to be a pretty short ride. You know, I've made my peace with it. I don't expect to die of natural causes, I expect to die in a conflagration or be murdered by a police officer or be, you know, murdered by an, in an industrial megacorp that releases toxins into the water or poisons my children. That's how I expect to go out. You know, and I'll take it back on my deathbed if I die of natural causes or die of something that I've done to myself. But you've got to watch these guys, they're old. They're in their 60s and 70s, they're not going to make it 20 years and they don't care if, you know, there's no future for any of you. They sincerely believe that they're going, you know, they, they'll be able to survive because of money. 
you know, and we need to attack the head. We don't need to start like looking at police reform. All the things that they've been doing are already illegal. They're already illegal. So making a new law doesn't cut it. You know, it's systemic reform that we need. It's people standing up, it's people running for office, people that have got no criminal record that can slide through, jump through the hoops and then start changing stuff. Because it needs change, it needs change from the top on down. The money needs to get out of politics. The ability for mega corporations to lean on politicians need to be taken away. Their, you know, their ability to avoid paying tax to pay for the services that educate, clothe and make enough people survive so they can work at minimum wage that needs government support. How many full-time employed people are getting food stamps in the States? Shitloads. How many people are on working tax credit? Working tax credit is corporate welfare. So, you know, I know not many people are going to watch this, but I, you know, I'm doing what I can. I'm going to do what I can until I'm stopped. And, you know, if you at all care about this sort of thing, people putting it into just as few words as possible, it's wrong. You've got to fight the head. You know, what we're doing now, although it's, it's absolutely necessary that someone gets up and picks up, you know, like justice and truth and attacks, this, attacks that system with it, that's important. But if you're going to pick up like some kind of like metaphorical weapon, what we're doing is banging our sword against their sword. Or just like a Hollywood sword fight or two children playing at sword fighting. Whereas an actual warrior would go, I need to take the head off this creature. You know, that's how you win the sword fight. Because sooner or later, they're going to stop banging their stick against our stick and letting us have, you know, our say. And they're going to crack down and they will be the first ones to take off our heads with that sword. They're playing with us right now with what they could really be doing. But they know that if they oppress too many of us, we won't go to work. If they're pressed, too many of us will rise up and there'll be an amazingly bloody revolution, which would be a massive waste of resources. We can change it from the inside, but we can only do that if people utilize that system and vote and record how they vote and share it outside of the government. You know, how about a Facebook page where you record where you voted and we make Mark Zuckerberg actually fess up and do that? Or how about you put it on Twitter, who seems to be finding a backbone? How about you upload it to a website? of some kind. How about it gets uploaded to YouTube? You've got to step up and you've got to take part because it's all of us or we all die. And we're all related. Every religion says we're all related. Every evolutionarist says we're all related. We are all related. We're all cousins. And this is not how you treat family. Everybody on earth should have a basic level of income, dignity, education, you know, medical care. That's what we should be doing with our time. Not letting Terrific people, you know, move around the lifetime wealth of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, in order to buy a yacht. That's not okay. It's not okay, and we're allowing it. And if, you're, if we were really thinking about it, we would organise strikes against those corporations, for a start, that don't pay tax. And a strike, you know, a purchasing strike on any corporation that pays less than a living wage. And that's easy enough to find out. You've all got computers, you've all got cell phones, you can look it up, you can Google it. You can use a mega corporation to tell you that that mega corporation is evading tax on an unprecedented scale. The kind of tax evasion that would land any one of us in prison for a long time. But there obviously is some magic line above which you can start contributing to politicians to a degree where you can start dictating what tax you are prepared to pay. It's up to you people. It really is. And we need to go for the head. And the other thing I want to talk about is the pulling down of statues, which I don't think is a good idea because sooner or later the political pendulum will come back the other way and statues of Martin Luther King or Rosa Parks or, you know, anybody, Thomas Paine, start getting vandalised by right-wing outlets, it's citing precedents for the fact that the left-wing has got away with it. That's just going to cause more division. What I would like to see is a black plaque. So those evil motherfuckers that have got statues on by law are required. This person was an asshole. The plaque should be, you know, maybe not black, but like some color, a green plaque, yeah? Where their poisonous lives are pointed out for everybody to see in perpetuity. Tearing down their statue will just mean they're forgotten about. We should never forget people that have done evil shit to hundreds and millions of people. We should always record that. Those people should be held up 
to school children as, as things we will never forgive. You know, the person, I, you know, idolatrized in this statue was, was horrible and did these things and we will never forget because if we forget, it will happen again. Those who do not learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So, thanks for watching, do take care. Where am I going? Who's coming with me? Never get that order messed up. And I'll be reporting on stuff and just talking about, you know, my experience of it until I die or you find someone better. And as a last thing, and I don't say this often enough, thank you to all my Patreons that are helping me. You know, it's a little bit of money goes a long way. It's paying for my internet bill at the moment. That's a bill that I don't have to worry about every month. So thank you, everybody. And I don't say it often enough, and I'm sorry for that, but... I'm pretty sure you get tedious out if at the end of every episode I did it. I do already. I list everybody that's helped me. So thank you so much to everybody. Thank you for continuing to watch. And I'll see you soon. Take care.